Ladies and gentlemen, the team of interpreters ask us to speak through the microphone so that we can hear each other. Well, another presentation by an important uh, person in the history of the Labyrinth Festival, who is an artist, Patrick Huber, who is also running a gallery in Berlin, but he's been also active in supporting us in installing other labyrinths. And I would like to give him the microphone now. Wolelibyśmy z mikrofonem. It creates some kind of distance. Is that to the lack of confidence? It also creates a distance to yourself, but yet let's cope with it. The cycle from which these paintings come from is called No Place Like Home. And this place is basically 50 meters around my flat, my house. And I chose it as a place to hunt for fascinating motives. These are views from the windows in the neighborhood where my house is reflected. It's a small paradise where I happen to live in Berlin. As I say, it's no place like home. It's also the, uh, a reference to the Wizard of Oz. which is why these uh, paintings were created in black and white. Like, like in the case uh, if Dorothy in a small boring farm in the east of the United States and the protagonist as we know is transferred to a fantastic land of dwarfs and fantastic creatures. She receives a, magic, a pair of magic shoes and she experiences a wonderful adventure colored in uh, Hollywood stylistics. And that was what my world was supposed to look like. This is the effect we can achieve with the use of the mobile phone, which is capable of creating a, a fairy of colors. However, Dorothy, at some point missing house, she decides to come back and she does it by thumping three times where, with her shoes, saying no place like home. And indeed, she moves back to the boring central east of the United States. Could you say a few words about the technique of these uh, photographies? In the beginning it was uh, photography, in the first stage there are no animations, no changes, it's just uh, a representation of what was seen in the windows of my neighbors' houses. There were some changes made later on in the process. Sometimes I moved the windows next to each other, bridging the, the gap between them so that they no, they're not so big. And later on it was printed on the foil and it was welded with uh, epoxy. It's some kind of a resin similar to glass. Once it's molded, it looks like glass. And we use this to carve these plates. And they have been materialized in this, in this material. And it created an effect of its own. It's uh, very magical, it's very atmospheric. And what is reflected 
in the windows. So this is the effect we achieve. When you chose the, the resin, I can see that indeed it looks as if it was flowing down the window. Was it the flowing resin? Indeed, it was. It would have been easier if I had had I used glass, but because it was used by has been used by me for many years, and it was important for me that when I could move these paintings from one place to another, because whenever we put it in a place, a different effect is achieved because of the lighting properties of the space where you display, display these works. And it's also a very durable material, resistant to fatigue. <laughs> but it's uh, fragile. It breaks under pressure. Well, not, because it has to be thick enough not to break. Does it have any psychedelic properties when you create works with this material? When you inhale it? No, unfortunately not. No, no, you can't get drugged on it. Some not, every, not every artist needs to take drugs in order to be able to create works of art. 